What's up, Fight Fans, and welcome back to another Contender Series breakdown here on the Vegas Odds YouTube channel. I am your host, the Fight Fans, Garrett Kerman, and with me, as always, is my man, Joe Danger himself, Jesse Hobson. What's up, man? How's it going? Oh, you know, after this past weekend, you know, I had to break out the howler head. Haven't drank in like a year, so time, better better now than never, I guess. Things didn't go my way, and th- those things happen. That's why we watch the sport. So hopefully we can bounce back on Tuesday, which I think we will. But, uh, you know, either way, I still have my boy Dana White coming through when I needed him most. So it is what it is. Unfortunately, over the past weekend, definitely didn't do well at all. Not even remotely well. I'd say <laughs> arguably one of the worst cards of the year. But we did cash big time Tuesday night last week, like we've been doing. We're right now 4-0 in the last two weeks of the Contender Series. Looking to build on that momentum this week here, week three, which is headlined by Poor's the standout wrestler, Penn State D1 All-American National Champion, Bo Nickel, making his, you know, UFC debut, might I say, because it's under the UFC banner, against Zachary Borrega. He's a minus 2,400 favorite, which is absurd for a guy that's only 1-0 so early in his career, but that's how high his, his ceiling is here. Before we get there, let's start on the very first fight of the evening, which is a fight in the women's strawweight division between Carolina Wachich and Sandra Lovato. And the line set at minus 250, 215 for Carolina, and the comeback on Sandra Lovato, plus 185. What I like about Tuesday night is I get to kind of look into these fighters that I otherwise probably wouldn't. While most uh, women women fight, WMMA is usually something that I would probably tune out for. I think that this Polish assassin, if you will, I think that she's going to be fun to watch. You know, I don't know if you got to see the weigh-ins and the face-offs, but these two got into it, man, and you know, I'm I'm excited for this. I'm excited for this fight. Wuchik, she has she has better hands. Honestly, from the footage that I saw, she just looks a little bit better everywhere. Lovato seems to have the reach, but outside of that, you know, there isn't really much much to mention. Her competition has been pretty bad, and the fact that she couldn't finish a lot of the bums that she did face, you know, I think that kind of speaks volumes here. I like Wuchik by decision. I think it's going to be decisive, and I think it's going to be unanimous. Caroline is arguably my biggest bet on the card i like what she brings to the table volume pressure aggression good wrestling she's got it all i feel like she's somebody that the ufc could sign because she's exciting to watch she's always gonna put a, a an exciting fight on for the fans she's always gonna ready to throw down what i don't like about her is you know her little head movement but other than that she's she's got some heavy hands she's got like two knockouts under her record most of them are decisions i think eight i think six are by decision two by knockout but she's got good movement as well she mixes things up very very well on the other hand lovato she's tall long lanky for for the division i think she's like five foot seven around there she uses her long range weapons well with her one twos and sometimes you know some push kicks and some uh body attacks uh but she's faced like you said horrible competition two of her opponents she faced twice yep same opponent twice four of her wins were against debut fighters her last win uh she's coming off a win against an 0 and 1 18 year old she was already <laughs> she was already nine and two she's an 11 pro veteran and she's facing an 0 and 1 18 year old that looked like she's like i don't know what i got myself into her eyes were wide open no idea what to do so that leads me to believe she's definitely not finishing the polish assassin here not at all punch for punch i gotta go with you know carolina grappling i gotta go with carolina i know lovato has you know more submissions on her resume but those are when she's not in a dominant position she's off her back so that means her opponent is on top of her being in a dominant position so i i have i have carolina all day in this matchup i just feel like she goes out there and absolutely dominates and she probably gets a contract because you know it's a division where they could get some more excitement in some new blood and then with carolina i watched her most recent loss and even in that like she did seem a little undersized in the loss but i mean she still came and fought the entire fight and i believe it was a split decision but it was against a bigger and bigger fighter i think that she's the more polished out of these two obviously it will probably go to a decision and because of which i think she'll get the nod just because she does seem more active and she packs the stronger punch if you will so i I think ultimately that'll play play well if if and when it does go to a decision all right our next fight up is in the men's flyweight division between clayton carpenter and edgar charez right now the line is a minus 300 betting favorite for carpenter and edgar plus two 
240 on the comeback. I like this one. I think this is a really interesting matchup, honestly. As much as I lo- like both guys, I think I'm going to be siding with the MMA lab prospect here. Carpenter, you know, he's been finishing fights, and I, I don't think it stops here. Cheres, he has decent stand-up, but he is a scrapper. He's not really polished, I guess you could say, on the feet. But I do think the longer it stays on the feet, the more competitive this fight is. When Carpenter gets into the ground, though, it should probably be over. I like Carpenter by sub as Cheres isn't that great on the ground. It is possible that Chares gets the uh, gets the finish. I just, I don't know. I have a feeling that Carpenter finds the sub and that's all she wrote. I liked what I saw from Carpenter and I liked what I saw from Edgar. The thing is about Carpenter, man, he's faced some pretty non-existent competition. The little, you know, cage time is going to not work in his favor here. Edgar has faced the better competition. He has much more cage time. And then Carpenter really hasn't faced anybody remotely that's going to bring what Edgar is going to bring to the table, which is pace, volume, pressure, scrambles. You know, the only time where Carpenter went the distance, he lost round three. So we know going in, he does have some cardio issues once you hit that third round mark. And, you know, he was getting pieced up against a pro debut fighter a couple of uh, fights ago. He had a result to taking him down, beating him up there, and laying on him, which he can definitely do in this matchup. But if he doesn't, that's a big if because Eggers actually has a pretty dangerous guard. He's got some missions off his back. He's good in scrambles. I mean, he does train with Brandon Moreno and co. So, you know, he's got some good jiu-jitsu. Just his takedown defense needs work. It's going to be competitive. I think Edgar has a slight advantage on the feet because he throws more volume and he's more vicious with his intentions, where Carpenter, I think, has the better fundamentals but he does get tagged he doesn't have the the best head movement and i sometimes feel he's a little robotic it's gonna be a very competitive fight i think it's the best fight on the entire fight card in a betting way i probably would have to decide betting with the underdog here i I don't know if i mentioned it in the last fight obviously we i picked carolina both as a pick and a play but this one here i'm picking carpenter as the winner but my play i don't have a play i I think that like you said i feel like it's very competitive and i just minus 300 that's insane for how close this this matchup really is moving on we got a fight in the featherweight division between anvar boy nazarov yeah or nazarov eric king silva right now the line is minus 140 on silva the comeback on boy nazarov so your boy nazarov <laughs> <laughs> he has he has 95 wins in kickboxing but he only started mma about a year and a half ago silva is also he has four subs in a row and i think that that's his path to victory here more mma experience silva he should roll here unless boy nazarov pulls off some sort of Jorge Masvidal like knockout, you know, in the very beginning stages of, of round one, which he has done. Not Obviously not the exact same knockout, but he I think he knocked out a guy in 13 seconds. I like Silva by sub, and I think it happens pretty early on in round one. I don't know why this line is as close as it is, I guess because there's so there's so much hype uh, surrounding Borna Azarov because of the fact that, you know, he's got 90 plus kickboxing fights. He's got numerous knockouts. He's won all three of his MMA fights by knockout. He has a split decision win over Giga Chikatsi in kickboxing back in 2015. You know, as a glory kickboxer, he was only four and five. He was one and four in his last five you know, glory kickboxing matches. He hasn't had a knockout, bef- you know, in kickboxing in a minute. And he also has like almost 30 losses too. So, I mean, 90 right. sounds cool until you say 30 losses as well. That's what I'm trying to say. I think there's just too much hype around him. I don't think he's a one punch knockout threat like he's been in his first three fights against competition that has a combined record of five wins and 15 losses. Be the guy that uh, with his pro debut, be another guy that was one in 10. And the other guy was four and two, you know, and then in comes Silva, you know, way more MMA experience. He's not a fish out of water on the feet either. He's got decent enough stand up. You look at Bornazrov, he only has three minutes and 10 seconds of cage time. You take this guy out of the first like three minutes of the first round and make him work. You have no idea what you're getting from him. So <laughs> it, it boils down to as long as Silva doesn't get deaded within the first two to three minutes, he probably should win this fight, especially he's got really good grappling. His entries are, are on his uh, double leg takedowns and all his grappling exchanges are very very good and once once it gets you on top and gets your back pretty much that's all she wrote Bornazrov hasn't defended a single takedown yet he hasn't had to defend a takedown he hasn't 
had to defend a submission attempt either. So we'll see what happens. I know he's training at, he he started training down here at American Top Team. Then he moved to Kill Cliff and he does some cross work over at Combat Club as well. So I know he's getting in really good work with high level grapplers and MMA fighters, but he's in a world, world of trouble if he doesn't get an early knockout in this fight. Yeah, I just feel like Silva's going to take him down and so Like it just seems so easy. I think with, with the Izzy and the uh, all of these guys transitioning and then actually kind of showing that they can do it too. I think that that's kind of bringing the hype. But at the same time, this guy is not easy, is he? There's, there's levels, but at the same time, consider who he's fought. I don't get it because Giga Jakate, when he came in, he was a massive favorite on his contender series fight. Minus 350, I believe. Austin Springer, who was 8-3, most likely kind of like Silva is. You know, good grappler, hasn't really fought or beaten anybody good at that time. Uh, he came in and, and, he, and he won. And Giga had more MMA experience and was a pro, I think, two or three years before Anvar, you know, Boris Bernazarov actually, you know, became a, a pro. And this guy is 33 coming in into this fight. And yeah. he's only got three wins and three pro fights. That is tough. I feel like this could be very reminiscent of that Giga Jakatsi fight. And he just gets grounded out and gets submitted. Moving on. That's all she wrote. That's all she wrote. Moving on. We got a, <laughs> we got a fight in the heavyweight division between Jamal Poggs and Porlo Renato Jr. Right now, Pogs minus 300 in the comeback on Renato plus 240. Who do you got? So I don't know how much you know about this fight. It's a weird one. Literally no footage on Renato Jr. Apparently he used to fight at 170 and now he's fighting at 265. He's only well, six. He's only I six. Think he, feet. I think he weighs like 221 or something like that. Yeah, but I mean, he's fighting like this is yeah. a heavyweight fight. He's only six feet tall. It's weird. I mean, apparently. So what I've heard or what I've read is that he he does also have a good kickboxing record. He's done that. And I just watched the stare downs. Like the guy is, is, is tiny. Jamal looks massive in comparison. 27 pound weight difference. What's also interesting is before the odds came out, everyone was on Renato Jr.'s side. So everyone was picking him to win. But then I think the lack of information came out and now everyone's kind of jumping shit. Jamal is, I mean, he's a grinder. Like he's, he's not exactly anybody to write home about, but I do, I do think, you know, with the advantages, the God given advantages that he has in this fight, I think that he just wrestles him to a, again, another decisive, grinding, grueling decision. I mean, he might find some ground and pound, maybe, but I mean, he looks a little out of shape himself. Curious to see what happens. I'm curious to see if this other guy, Renato, gets exposed. I'm curious to see why this matchup was even made. I feel like it, this matchup was made for Kayo Bachat, Bachat, Machado. Oh, yeah, yeah, it was. It was. You know, he, he got pulled out, so now you got Hanato versus Pogues, and that's what we're kind of left with. Like, everything you said this is and he's a small tiny heavyweight pogs was um he's been on the contender series before facing 11 and 0 prospect much like hanato jr is here he's 10 and 1 he granted him out and i kind of expect the same he's also got the 27 pound weight advantage and i don't think hanato's on that level so this should be a walk in the park for pogs as long as he doesn't get caught he should uh get the job done yeah, I just think it's weird. How, why is this guy getting a shot? Like, I know we say this every week, you know, it's like, why this guy? But I think that, yeah, this is kind of a like a last ditch effort to can have an extra fight on this card. Hopefully one of them shows up because, you know, they have an opportunity to be seen considering the next fight. True that, true that. And finally up to our featured bout for this week's contender series is a fight between Bo Nickel, the D1 All-American National Champion from Penn State taking on Zach Borrego. Right now the line is uh, massive. I think he's minus 2,400 and the comeback on Borrego, I believe it's like plus 1,200. I got lucky. I got him at minus 1,500. So. <laughs> Hell yeah. <laughs> Super lucky. Hell yeah. No, I, I heard that there was people that got him at minus 300. I want to see those those slips. Yeah, me too. Because I... I Honestly, I had like an alert set and everything for this, and I I didn't see it. Like it just didn't happen. So if you had three hundred, I'd minus three hundred. I'd like to see it. But uh, also, uh, I wanted to mention. I don't know if you've seen the UFC promo photo that's kind of going around of these two. It's Bo Nickel, you know, looking like the suave mf'er that he is. You know, he has his arms all crossed like this, like looking all good. And then you have, um, you know, the uh, Zach Barago. He's he has his arms like down like this and he kind of looks chubby. Like it's like the UFC is doing him no favors like in this promo photo. Barago is not a bad, is not necessarily bad competition. He has a, a, a Taekwondo background. He has decent striking. 
um, you know, on the feet, but he will be outmatched here. This is a showcase fight, you know, and then also too, Bo has looked better on the feet, you know, than a lot of people I think were expecting. Let it be known that the guy he beat was 36 years old, but this all comes down to wrestling. I just assumed that this will be a ground and pound fest. Bo will find the finish as soon as he gets him down, a la Kayla Harrison to the fifth degree. I think that this is going to be insane. It's cool that, you know, that these wrestlers are getting notoriety like a lot of times you know back years ago these guys would come through wrestling uh through college and they do their four years and then what else do they have the, the olympics this guy is you know he's going to be a household name i'm excited to see you know what he does here at uh minus 2400 i've never even seen a fighter that's only one and oh in their professional career go in as a minus 2400 favorite that is just insane but it goes to show you how highly touted Bo Nickel is as a prospect to be such a heavy favorite in his only second professional fight. And rightfully so, the dude has, he's got hands now. We've seen it. I know, granted, he was going against like a 36-year-old bartender. You know, that's he, neither here nor there. He put in a, you know, a nice little combination and knocked him out. I mean, that was impressive. You know, whether it was against anybody else, that was that was impressive. So it shows that he's making leaps and bounds over at American Top Team. He's mixing things up better. That's just going to make him more dangerous, Paul. Honestly, I think he knocks him out on the feet inside two minutes. I think he shows he's got big boy punching power and he can go toe to toe. He's going to take, a, I think he's going to take a couple punches more than his last fight. I think he's going to just tag him with the right hand and just uh, start landing some haymakers and putting him out on the feet. This is the definition of a showcase fight. You know, he's going to come in there. He's going to look impressive. I don't know if the over one and a half, under one and a half is because it's definitely going to be at one and a half, but obviously the under there. Probably wins inside round one. It's going to look impressive. I don't know if he's going to get a contract, but I think they're just going to give him one of those developmental deals, get him a couple wins to probably throw him on Titan FC, give him two to three more wins. And then once he's like five and oh, four and oh, they'll give him his UFC debut. Yeah, I don't, I don't think so. <laughs> I think they're, they're going to give him a developmental deal, but I think that it's going to be like, Greg Hardy 2.0 because Hardy had that same deal in place like he was going to do like the de developmental like the I forget what, yeah, what, what he did his first show his first fight got canceled and then he ended up on UFC like two weeks later no I believe he had a a regional fight afterwards it got canceled and then he was on ufc because i had really? it i had it i had it on my calendar yeah he was the main event it was in florida yeah and it got he got it, the main event got canceled and then something else got the co-main got pushed up because it was a decent card like i knew most of the fighters on the card but i think that that's ultimately why he got the call up because the card still had legs and then ultimately it was like greg hardy makes his ufc debut even though he was on that deal but i think personally if he does knock him out i think he gets signed and then and he's going to get that, you know, that Dana White privilege more so than most people because oh, he, he, yeah, he's a moneymaker. This kid's a moneymaker. And Dana White knows. They all yeah. know. There's people that I know that don't watch UFC and know who this kid is. That in itself says a lot. I mean, he's American. And then ATT, that connection is also, they they have the crossover with AEW, which is the actual wrestling promotion. Right. So there, there's a lot that this kid can do to get his face on the screen and I, I if he shows up which i do think he will i think he gets signed i think he's on the you know poster it's he's probably going to headline the next prelims that he's a part of and they're going to probably sign these shit houses you know these guys that we all loathe just to continue to get him wins a la ian gary sky's the limit for bo nickel that's for sure but yeah that's where our breakdown ends for this week's contender series <laughs> week three perfect transition i love it <laughs> and that's that's where it ends <laughs> that's, this is where our breakdown ends before we go we gotta tell you guys you gotta you guys gotta go to vegas odds give them a follow on all social platforms subscribe to the youtube channel we're here with you every single week helping you make some money especially on the contender series that's our bread and butter report and now looking to continue our winning ways this week but before we go our man jesse hobson where can everybody find you, you can find me on hallerhead.com you can find me on uh fathly training uh camp you know I'm, I'm everywhere dude i'm like the enigma of mma betting i just like to show up show out and you know hang out with garrett that's all i like to do so find me follow me and let's make some money at the and and collect our our money at the betting window as they say absolutely and we will see you guys next week we're out of here